In this paper, we consider the problem of self-supervised visual representation learning from videos by predicting the future. Intuitively, if the model is able to solve such tasks, we will imagine that it has fully understood the action patterns in videos. However, predicting the future is not an easy task. Why? First, if we consider predicting the future at the pixel level like the future frames, they are full of stochasticity like illumination changes. Second, the future may not always be predictable, it can have multiple modes. Let's see an example here. Imagine I present you the following frames, which is the beginning of a video with a hammer throwing action. Can you predict the future frame? Sure, you may be able to predict the rough scene, like the human still stands on the field with some trees in the background. But how about the details? The trees might have tiny movement, the cloud might move a few pixels due to the wind, the shadow might change a little bit because it's approaching sunset. Note that if the model is asked to predict the future frame, all of these details matter. We can see the future prediction involves so many uncertainties. Ok, now, can you predict the future frame, even the rough human action? Perhaps this is also not easy. This example is hammer throw. Do we know in the near future if the human is going to throw away the hammer or spin for another cycle? Throwing and spinning are the two modes of the future for this video. Both of them can happen. Thus, we see predicting future involves multiple hypotheses. We propose memory augmented DPC that simultaneously deals with uncertainties and multiple hypotheses. To deal with uncertainties, our model predicts the future at the feature level to only encode the high-level semantics. We also use contrastive loss as a training objective to avoid an over-strict constraint. To deal with multiple hypotheses, we propose a compressive memory module which is able to consider multiple futures simultaneously. Now I will briefly go through our approach. At the beginning, we extract a spatial temporal feature from the input video clips to get a context to representation. Then we prepare a shared memory bank. It just contains some vectors. To predict the future states, we simply infer a probability distribution over this memory bank. And the predicted future state is a convex combination of the memory slots. Note that the memory bank is shared for all videos and simply contains trainable parameters that are optimized during self-supervised training. Ideally, the memory bank stores all the possible future states, and the model selects the corresponding future states for the given input video. In this example, one peak in the probability distribution can indicate the spinning action. The other peak can indicate the throwing action. For the training objective, we use spatial temporal contrastive loss as in our previous work DPC. We get our predicted feature as explained before, and we can also get the ground truth features from the future of the video. If the predicted feature and the ground truth feature come from the same video and the same spatial temporal position, then they form a positive pair, otherwise they form a negative pair. With the contrastive loss, the predicted future does not have to be exact as long as it can emit a higher similarity score with a positive sample than with other negative samples, it will incur a low loss. Thus, the model can perfectly ignore modeling the low-level stochasticity and only focusing on the semantics. In detail, our architecture looks like this. The input video is cut into multiple short clips, and we extract the video feature in two steps. First, we use a shared feature encoder F to extract a feature for all the short clips. Then we aggregated the feature over time with the function g to get a context feature ct that covers all the past information up to time t. After that, the model starts to predict the future from the context feature ct with the memory module. It predicts multiple steps into the future. Meanwhile, we can also get the ground truth features from the future video and compute the contrastive loss. The objective is to learn a good representation for the encoder function f. Our architecture is universal to any choices of encoder function f and aggregation function g. In our experiments, we use 2D3D ResNet as the encoder function f 
and we use single layer GRU as the function G. Furthermore, we improve the representation quality with two extensions. The first is a classical two-stream network for videos, namely the original RGB stream and the optical flow stream. The second is a bi-directional temporal aggregator. The details can be found in our paper. The model is trained from scratch on UCF101 or Kinetics 400 in a self-supervised way, in other words, without using any labels. Next, I will show a visualization of what is learned by the memory module and then evaluate the quality of the learned representation on four downstream tasks. Here, we visualize the probability distribution that the model uses to select the memory slots. For the same action, the model learns to produce similar distributions. For another action, the probability has a different pattern. Note that all of these are learned without using any labels. Our model uses the probability distribution to choose memory slot, but what's captured by the memory slot? Following the last example, we choose the three peaks in the probability distribution and find their corresponding memory slots and use each memory slot to find the nearest neighbor from the input video. The result shows the chosen memory slots match with different states of the swing action. In the next few slides, I will show our performance on downstream tasks, but I will start by explaining which feature we use for these tasks. Recall that this is our MEMDPC architecture, and this is the architecture for downstream tasks. In detail, we remove the memory module and the future prediction pipeline and we take the context representation CT and average pull it into a vector for evaluation. Next, for video retrieval, we show a model pre-trained on UCF101 without any labels and evaluated for video retrieval on UCF101. In detail, we use testing set videos to retrieve training set videos, and we compare our method with a network trained with supervised learning on Kinetics 400. The left is a query video and the right are the top three nearest neighbors. Here is another example. As you can see, the representation learned from self-supervised training is also capable of retrieving correct actions. More quantitative numbers can be found in our paper. For action classification, our model is pre-trained on Kinetics 400 without any labels, and we show the classification results on UCF 101. In this figure, we compare our method with other recent self-supervised methods for the fine-tuning protocol on UCF 101. Note that all methods use only the visual modality. When comparing with others, we note that the different architectures and modalities makes the comparison extremely difficult, but here we are trying to present the result as fairly as possible. Clearly, our method outperforms all the other methods, and is comparable with the DynamoNet, which is pre-trained on two years of data, compared to ours 28 days. Furthermore, this figure shows other self-supervised methods that use extra modalities like audio and text. Recent works like XDC and ELO achieve excellent performance on action classification, but they use audio-video data with a duration of 21 years and 13 years respectively, whereas we only use visual data and only 28 days. For efficient learning, our model is pre-trained on UCF without any labels and evaluated on UCF. We fine-tune the network for action classification in a supervised way but with limited number of labeled data. We compare to a representation initialized with random weights. The left is RGB input and the right is optical flow input. It shows that when the model is pre-trained on UCF101 with self-supervised learning, it only needs less than half of the labeled data to get comparable results with that from randomly initialized weights. Lastly, we evaluate our representation on the unintentional action classification task on the OOPS dataset. Our model is pre-trained on Kinetics 400 and the OOPS dataset without any labels, and it's evaluated on OOPS. The OOPS dataset defines three types of actions along the temporal axis. They are intentional, transitional, and unintentional, like this. Basically, this task is a three-way classification task. On this task, we outperform a very strong baseline that is supervised pre-training on the Kinetic 700 under the fine-tuning protocol. Thank you.